Hello and welcome to Jerez, the third round of the International GT Open. We're here at the former home of the Spanish Grand Prix, the fifth and sixth races of the season. But before we get on to this weekend's action, let's recap with what happened at the Nürburgring and Portimao. The season started with a bang at the Nürburgring. First corner contact putting Nick Katzberg into a spin. Plenty of jostling for position in the early stages as Isaac Tutumlu became an early casualty. Out front, Nico Ramos and Nicky Pastrelli dominated the race from Roman Mavlanov and Daniel Zampieri, with Nick Katzberg and Maxime Soule completing the rostrum. An early triumph for last year's championship runner-up. On to Portimao, and once more it was the Corvettes towards the front as, as ever, there was plenty of action to be found throughout the field. Sometimes getting a little bit too close. Isaac Tutumlu and Maxime Soule ran out front, while Stefano Constantini and Alan Sicart dominated in the GTS class. Now that was the move that decided the race in favour of the Salasat Racing Team Corvette. Soule's second win of the season alongside new co-driver Tutumlu. Race two saw an all-Corvette front row Daniel Zampieri snuck through into second place to Harry Soule in the early stages. It's behind Giorgio Roda made contact with the sporting new Mercedes. To mid-race pit stops, it looked as if it was going to be Mavlanov's day, but that puncher put the SMP man to the back of the field, promoted Ramos and Pastrelli to the lead, as Tumlu and Monterminy scrapped over second. Which eventually went Monterminy's way after that spin from Vashlav Malev, but to Tumlu wide allowed Montermini through. So it was a second triumph for Ramos and Pastorelli. So how does a lap of the Hareth circuit feel? Well, let's find out. Our chauffeur is Alan Sickart of the Ombra Racing Ferrari squad. So long, the short start to finish straight uphill braking zone into turn one claim the late apex for the very short sprint on towards the second turn Use the rumble strip on the exit again take the late apex immediately you're arriving into turn three the left hander before you build the momentum the pace increases through turn four and then it all becomes about setting up for the back straight the long long turn five Carry the constant radius, plant your right foot, and then the road drops away. This is the longest straight on the circuit, and it leads into the principal overtaking opportunity, which is the hairpin. Break as late as you dare, but make sure that you get the apex, because the corners here on in come thick and fast. Sprint on to first of a sequence of left-handers. Alan being very smooth here, just using a little bit of the kerb on the exit again. Lovely driving technique there, just very smooth turn of the steering wheel. We're into the double right-hander sequence. Alan Sikar making this look very, very easy, but he's absolutely flying. So then head in to the tight chicane. Again, you can overtake possibly on the brakes into to this section of the track. Use the curves, but be careful to make sure you get a good exit because we come towards the end of the lap, the final hairpin again, the opportunity to overtake. It's where Rossi and Jib are now tangled in the MotoGP, going on for a decade ago now. Take the late apex and then carry the pace onto the start and finish straight. So here's a lap then with Alan Sicar. race saw Cesar Campanico on pole from Daniel Zampieri as the pack sprinted towards turn one. Zampieri snuck through to take the early advantage. Campanico turning through in second just ahead of Montermini and Tutumlu. Despite the jostling they all made it through the opening couple of turns. As the race unfolded we were treated to some brilliant battles. Navarro Barber and Craig Dolby. Likewise Matt Griffin and Joel Camathius. The Irish driver sneaking ahead of the Swiss into the turn 13 hairpin. 
Archie Hamilton and Alvaro Barber also engaged in battle. Barber able to dive ahead of the Brit into turn one. As they headed towards turn two, Barber just snatched a break, slithered wide, and that allowed Hamilton to regain the place. Dylan De Dela pushing to the absolute limit as he looked to get up into the points. Well, Hamilton's joy was short-lived as co-driver Diedrich Shitov took over. The rear left detached itself, pitching Shitov into the gravel trap. Andrea Montermi into the pits early to hand over to Niccolo Shiro. Campanico then ducked in from second to pass over the Audi to Atiyah Patel. Race leader Zampieri was the last in. Jerome Mavlanov left to drive the anchor leg, hopefully bring the car home for its first win of the season. The sister SMP Russian Bears Ferrari of Jose Perez Icart was flying as he was able to move clear of Pastrelli. So it was victory for Mavlanov and Zampieri, second for Patel and Campanico, with Paolo Ruberti and Giorgio Roda completing the rostrum. Thumbs up from Mavlanov as he and Zampieri put the disappointment of Portimao behind them. An excellent day for Campanico and Patel, second overall and winners in the GTS class. We work a lot before the race and it was, it was fine. I don't know, I don't know what I need to say, but I'm very happy and the car is good. We had some problem with the last five lap because Saris is was too old, but totally it's okay. It was a perfect day because we don't do any mistake and from Friday the car was not so good at the start, but we improved the car for the Wally and now we are here, so it means that the work that we did was okay. After the two first races that were not very good for our car and we were still learning uh, this championship, um, this race was good, just the start was impossible for me to handle the first position because in power it just lost too much. Uh, but then the race pace was okay, I had a few problems with the Montermini, he touched me and we got a bit of, uh, I lost a bit of time but in the end I brought the car home to Aditya to, to finish the race. It wasn't easy actually. I had a few, I had a couple of moments where I kind of lost control, but it was good. Managed to keep the car on track after that, and then bring it to the line. It was good to see that the times were consistent. So that I guess kept us, gave us the margin to bring it home comfortably in second place. I was uh, behind the Corvette, the yellow Corvette, and uh, I tried to over took, uh, overtake the Corvette. But uh, at the beginning, maybe it was slower than me. But after some lap, it was faster than me. We did a good stint. The car was quite good. We have good pace without a big problem. And we are really happy for the second pace of our category and third overall. It was a really hard race because the, with new Bob, the Audi was really fast. And, but we have a really good pace, even if the car was hard to drive. But I'm really happy for the work done by Paolo and me. So second place is good for the championship and good points for us. Race two in Jerez was an absolute thriller. It was Pulsus Michele Rugolo who converted into the early advantage, leading the way to turn one ahead of Jose Perez Icart and Nicky Pastorelli. Behind though, it was all very busy. Lorenzo Bontempelli running wide in the Nissan as the Umbra Ferraris tangled. The day then significantly worsened for the Umbra squad. Stefano Constantini fired off into the tyre wall, heavy impact from which he was lucky to escape. And in taking a base of action, Giorgio Roda also rotated into retirement. Nicolo Shiro was having a fine day in the Valorba course Ferrari and that pass on Nicky Pastorelli, one of the moves of the season, positioned the Valorba team well as the race unfolded. Roman Mavlanov was also trying to be on the move, but was briefly ahead of Atiyah Patel before he slithered wide and the Indian repassed him. Well, mid-race pit stops always turn things on their head and Andrea Montermini, when he got behind the wheel, was in a flying mood. That pass on Vachilov Maliev brought him into contention as he chased down the 35 second deficit to the race leader Claudio Sedanvic. Archie Hamilton was also keen to make an impression he was able to quickly dispatch Maliev. Maliev was then dramatically passed by Joel Kamakis who slivered to the inside. Maliev tried to retaliate, 
Unfortunately, the SMP Russian Bears Ferrari broke traction and he spun, losing a couple of places. Well, the story of the second half of the race was the charge of Montermany and the Nissan on its debut with Craig Dolby behind the wheel. That was the pass for second as the pair of them reeled in Claudio Sedanvic. And by the flag, they had passed Sedanvic to give the first victory of the season to Montermany and Shiro. And runner-up spot and GTS victory on its debut to the Nissan of Bontempelli and Dolby. Jubinon Montermany celebrated his return to the top step of the rostrum and the championship lead, whilst Bontempelli and Dolby celebrated a fine debut. So Andrea Montermany, Nicola Shiro, first win of the season. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. I think it was, very, it was great today, especially in this beautiful headed. And Nicolo, that pass on Pastorelli, that was quite something. Yeah, yeah it's been uh, good, uh, a nice overtake uh, and uh, first win uh, here in Hellerheads, first win uh, in GT Open, uh, in a GT car, uh, great job for uh, all the team. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> From now on it's going to be very tough because everybody is quite close. The other Ferrari and the Corvettes, are still, they will be there and the next part of the season is going to be tough, tough, tough. Craig, what a debut weekend for Nissan in the GT Open. Yeah, it's fantastic, you know, to, to be able to be here with Nova Race in the Nissan was a fantastic opportunity for me. A late one, um, knowing that I was only going to race on Wednesday. Um, but to partner Lorenzo and come away with a class win and second overall was amazing, you know, a great feeling. I am very happy. The car is very good. My Craig, good. Maybe because he... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. And what's the plans for the rest of the year? We don't know yet. We, um, you know, like I said, my, I only got the call on, on Wednesday, so um, we have to go back, sit down, work hard and, and try and get it out for future races in GT Open. And uh, it's a fantastic series and I'm sure Nissan and everyone would like to be here and competing full time. Two fantastic races this weekend from the International GT Open, full of action. Well, that's it from Jerez, but join us in a couple of weeks' time with all the action from the Hungaro race.